want to guide the communication to awareness, now, past and future. Okay. Now, there's an awful lot we could say about those things. There's not a terrible lot we can say about awareness that would, be, that would actually be meaningful. There's a lot we can say about now. There's a lot we can say about the past. There's a lot we can say about the future. So I want to just um, guide the communication to that, it's just to see what's, if anything's been triggered in me presenting that today, whatever it is that comes up, challenge it, put it out there, no matter what, put it out there and we'll um, attempt to tackle it or unravel it as such. You know, perhaps to just guide us in there somewhat. <coughs> We're so convinced that the past and the future are real and that time is real. That belief that the past and the future are real and that time is real is what creates this idea of seeming self seeming little me entity that believes it's here and running the show. So I want everyone, if you can, speak from here now, from where you currently find yourself. So, from here, now, is it possible for you to leave here now and go into the past? Leave the present moment and go and experience something from the past. Is it possible? Is it possible to leave here now where you currently find yourself, right here? Is it possible to leave here now and visit the future? Now. This now that's being experienced. Does it have a direction? Is it experienced as um, a series of nows moving forward into the future? Come to your direct experience right here, right now. Right here. Can you experience this now moving in a direction? Namely, we're not normally moving towards the future and away from the past. Is that your direct experience? Okay. Who here is not aware? <laughs> on you, Kelly. <laughs> Who here is not aware?
who can tell me about the experience of awareness? Everyone's aware. Tell me about the experience of awareness. What is this awareness? What is it? Are there any mechanics that go along with awareness? Now, who here can tell me what you are aware of? Senses. There's one. Yeah. What else? What else are we aware of? Thoughts. Hi. Good thoughts, yeah. Sensible yeah. looker. Sense of, what was that, David? Of, uh, something that's looking. Something that's looking. That's That would be akin, would it not, to being aware of being aware? Yeah. Yeah. The heaviness. Who, oh, who said that? Who said I heaviness? did, Shelley. Oh, Shelley, okay. Thanks, Shelley. Okay, we've got a heaviness. <laughs> That's an interesting one. Now, there's plenty we're aware of. Does everybody agree to that? Yes. Okay. Now, who or what is this that is aware? No idea. <laughs> it feels like um, eternity. <laughs> it feels like there's no edges. It's, it's spaciousness. Mm -hmm. What, what can we say about awareness indeed what can we say about consciousness there's not it's interesting I find that it's not a course of study academically or I don't, I don't know. It's like I've read somewhere. It's the most important thing, but it's so overlooked by mainstream um, teaching. And I, I'm not a college student, but <laughs> you don't hear about the study of consciousness. <laughs> I don't know if there's much can be said. Mm. They're trying to, but they're trying to objectify consciousness and study it as a thing, which is not possible. Consciousness is not objective, nor to his awareness. You can't really measure it. Correct. There's and different levels of consciousness. No, there's not different levels of consciousness. Who said that? Shelley? Was that you, Shelley? Yes. Yeah, no. Yes. Sorry, got to shoot you down there. There are not different levels of consciousness. No. no. Can we say, Terry, it's abstract? Corinne, where are you? I hear your voice. I can't see your face. There you are. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sorry, say that again. Can we say it's abstract? What's abstract? It's not palpable. It's not something. What? Say it. What? Awareness. Like a... Thank you. Awareness. Now ask your question again using that word. What's that? Ask your question again. Ah, okay. I, I was saying, can we say it's abstract? 
and it's not palpable. palpable. It's something, something you, you can't can't be touched. It can't be. Uh, uh, it's just abstract. So it's, another uh, sure. Another word is conceptual. It's not conceptual. It totally is conceptual. It absolutely is conceptual. Awareness and consciousness, both concepts. Absolutely both yeah. concepts. The experiencing of awareness. Now what can you say? Stop, pause. Can you say abstract? Can you say conceptual? What can you say? Right here, Coco. Anything you say is not true. But the mind will fish around trying to describe it. And the description is never the described. Mm. It's always only a description. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Good. Now, we, is yeah. it a, does it present itself in increments? No. When is it not now? <laughs> when is it not now? Now, where do we live? Where do we live? Oh, now. Uh, who said that? Was that David? No, who said that? Life only occurs now. No, it it seems more. obvious. It's a statement and a concept, but it, it seems to be true. Yeah. You can only be alive now. Yeah, from, your, from our direct experience, which is what I stated earlier, just come back to right here, right now with me. All of us are sitting here from your direct experience. So it's self-evident. It's not something that needs to be learnt or even conceptualised. From your direct experience right here, now. Is this now? moving in a direction, in a direction, is it? Now, let's all be honest. Where do you live? Ordinarily, where do you live? Yesterday prior to coming into satsang just now, where do you ordinarily live? Piecing yesterday into tomorrow. <laughs> I've the, got these materials. I've got this time tomorrow, and I'm going to incorporate them together. i got a plan for my future so it goes smoothly so I can integrate yeah. the past to the future that doesn't exist. <laughs> Thank you, David. Where do we live? Past and the future. Either or. That's where we're living. In the past or the future. You know that both those places that I asked you, go there. Go there right now. Go to the past or go to the future and experience it. Because that's where you're living. Can you, from here now, remove yourself <laughs> from now and go into the past? When is it not now? 
It's always now. Terry, it seems this is Jenny. Jenny, yeah. It seems like my mind or the thoughts are always talking about the now. And and so it's like almost although it can't be, it's seemingly like an immediate past tense attention, even though you know it's yeah. still now, right? Yeah. Um, there's the commentate the commentary that's going in the now, talking about the now or other things, but even the now, it's like, oh, that tree's so pretty, that tree's so pretty, that, and then on and on with the thoughts. But so it's kind of like in the now, but talking about it in such a way where the attention is on what a, a second after or something like that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> All our life, we've lived in an objective place. What about the pure, pure subjectivity of here now? What do we find here now? We have to use labels, unfortunately, <laughs> until, until it dawns, then you don't. Here now, what, what, what's, what's arising here now, is there anything we can say about it? There is things we can say about it. Spaciousness. What, what, oh, someone said spaciousness, yep. Some, there's a key couple of words I'm looking for here. Can it be like, the, oh, like always the same now? Always the same. Some, some, seems somewhere always the same. Yeah. Colors. Who said that? David. What did you say, David? Colors. Colors. Okay. There's an aliveness. Yeah. Hello. <laughs> Yes, Ursula. Who here is not experiencing being? Who here is not experienced being alive? Anybody? Who here is dead? <laughs> <laughs> there are qualities. Absolutely, there are qualities to right here, right now. And we trade those qualities to live in the mind where those qualities can't and aren't experienced. Why? Everything that happens in mind is objective and the objective cannot experience the subject. It's not possible. The object is dependent on the subject. And we live in a mind. What's the trade-off? <laughs> Everything. <laughs> Here, now, aliveness, being, consciousness, bright life. Totally missed. Like, we miss it. We might as well be asleep. Seriously. We might as well be asleep. Yeah. What we're taking to be my life, and it's so important, and yeah, it's no different from the content of a dream. It's no different. It even presents itself the same way. Imagination. Be fair to say that the content of a dream the sleeping dream is imagination, yeah? 
Absolutely fair to say that. And we trade off this pure, beautiful, present moment, this now that, that isn't measured. It's not incremental. We trade that off. Now I've got more important things to take care of. I've got to live in the mind. Why? Well, it's important. And if I don't live in there, shit won't happen. Things won't get done. <laughs> Which is just conditioning. It's a belief and it's only conditioning. We've been conditioned to believe that. What happens when we, when we literally let go of the steering wheel? We understand that conceptually, letting go. But who here actually does it? <clears throat> Puts it to the test. Put it to the test. Let go. Really let go. And what do you discover in the letting go? Holy shit. Stuff just continues to happen. It's not dependent on me, the steerer, the mover and shaker, the doer. <laughs> Even the doer doesn't have to worry about anything. The doer is just also being expressed. It's just happening. The seeming doer, the me, in other words. You have to worry about the me. Not even responsible for it. It's just happening. <laughs> See this. See this. It's not rocket science. The truth will set you free. If you can see that the past and the future are just conceptual, you can't visit there. You can't go there. You cannot go to the past. You cannot go to the future. You can't go there. <laughs> At all. Which, if that's the truth, where does that always leave you? From your own direct experience. Where does that always leave you? Always. Here now. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, what's happening that we can't step out of mind? Why can't we let go of the steering wheel? Sorry, David, go for it. But life can seem like an ongoing story and there's there's various obstacles to be avoided because there's fear. <laughs> you know? Yeah, I know. But but, the they're, but they're, yeah, but they're 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 in the future, are they not? Purely imagined. Yeah, you gotta be prepared for the future. The past is shown that you know it won't be understood or that's the you trap. Know, we, yeah, that's the trap. Yeah. That's the trap. What I'm asking you to do, even just for a moment, use the truth and just for a moment, arrive here. Let go of the future. Let go of the past. Find half an hour where you can sit outside or somewhere by yourself, not distracted by anything or anyone, and put it to the test. You don't have to worry about the future or the past for the next half an hour and arrive here and just sit here. Give yourself permission to do that. This only needs to be seen once. Seriously. What I'm pointing at only needs to be seen once. The show's over. The searching is over. The suffering is over. 
all the meeting is over. It's over. What's left? Your true self, your true actual nature. That that is there prior to the dream. That's why I use the sleeping dream analogy a lot. Yeah. We think we're a person. Let's go to the sleeping dream analogy. Yeah. We've gone to sleep, body's on the bed, lying there horizontally, probably on its side with knees, knees curled up, doona or blanket, whatever you want to call it, pulled up over you, lights are out, it's dark, and we go to sleep. And in the, then the sleeping dream arises. Sleeping dream arises because we become unconscious of our immediate environment. That's the mechanics. See that? Please see that. Yeah. We become unconscious of our immediate environment. Um, do you choose to do that? Are you controlling your consciousness? Oh, I need to wind back my consciousness now so as that this body can go to sleep and dreaming can start to happen. You don't even thinking about it. But I'm sharing with you the mechanics. This is what happens. Then dreaming starts. Now, dream character arises in the sleeping dream. Now, let's just for a moment say yeah, that this current life that you think you're leading, your background, your concerns about the future, your history, all your memories, let's just assume for a moment that this, what you think is happening now, arises in the dream. We think this, you know, this that we take to be real, it arises in the dream. And it just so happens that everybody here is on a non-dual path. They chime in and listen to Terry once or twice a week and when they're not doing that, they're sitting on YouTube looking at other stuff, other non-dual teachers and reading books and, sitting quietly to, you know, for half an hour to try and experience the now without a future or a past, <laughs> which I just threw into the dream. Yeah. All of that is going on. Why? The dream character in the dream is convinced there's a thing called enlightenment and I'm going after it says the dream character in the dream. And that dream character in, in the dream feels real, feels real. We run into this satsang and run into that satsang and charging over here and buffeted around by life, life that's, in, that's appearing in the dream. Remember, the body is still lying there horizontal on the bed. Now, why is the dream character engaged in all of this? Why? There's a belief that it can wake up from a dream. And apparently, that waking up from the dream is called enlightenment or awakening. What happens when you wake up from the sleeping dream? What happens to that dream character? What happens to all that searching? What happens to the running to this satsang and that, that satsang and this teacher and this book? And what happens to when you wake up in the morning, all of a sudden the body that's horizontal starts to stir? What happens to that dream character? Please don't tell me that you think that that dream character in the dream is you that's here that wakes up in the morning. Please don't tell me that you believe that. Or the world <laughs> in that dream. We're charging around and we want to wake up. What happens to the dream character when you wake up in the morning? Please tell me. 
what happens to it? It's gone. It's gone. <laughs> All that searching in the dream was fruitless. <laughs> the dream character can never awaken. The exact same thing is happening here, guys. Now, fortunately, fortunately, <laughs> it's not the dream character that needs to wake up. Can, a, a, can an awakening occur? Yes. You're just taking it to be you, the dream character that's going to awaken. And it's not what's actually happening is you're awakening to the fallacy of the dream character. It's not real. It's not real. <laughs> 